Today I am trying something completely new and very bold for me. Yes, it did scare me, but I am going all in this year. With my husband now joining me in the work at home gang, we decided to come up with a more permanent solution to our desk and storage needs. I've always wanted this front room of our house to be multifunctional, and I'm so excited to say that I've partnered up with my friends at Home Depot and PPG to make that happen. Honestly, achieving a huge goal of mine to work with this team, so thank you all for making it possible. We learned a lot of lessons in this project, which is good, always learning, growing here, and we love that. A little bit more on the paint later, let's start with my planning process for this room. I have always loved the look of custom built-ins. After searching on Pinterest for the basic idea, I landed on doing a desk and bookshelf combo. These are a few of the pictures that I thought we would be able to make happen based on the dimensions of our wall. PPG has over a thousand one coat colors, so I thought maybe I'll branch out a little. This navy built-in from the DIY playbook on Instagram was a big inspiration, but ultimately it was Drew at Lone Fox and his dining room video that convinced me to take a leap and try a dark, dark navy color. I will link his video down below because I got a lot of inspiration from it. Also, just a heads up to learn more about PPG or to find any of my products, there will be a link for you in the description. Starting in the dining room, I will Went ahead and moved things out and just cleaned it all up. So here's a tip for planning out projects. I know the general idea of what I want to do here, but I'm having a hard time seeing the depth of it and what it'll look like spaced out along this wall. I'm gonna take some painter's tape and try some different outlines on the floor. This works if you're trying to plan things on your wall or the floor. I did this for the kitchen with the shelves. So I am looking at all the dimensions of different things that I could get to go in this space and trying them here to see what I like best before we go and pick them up tomorrow. Okay, after much deliberation, I think we found something we're gonna try to work with. These are the Billies. They're even marked down so they're only $49. And of course, we also found a plant. Please comment down below all of your knowledge. How am I supposed to take care of this so that she thrives? We just got back from Ikea, so we have some assembling to do. I've spent this whole week trying to figure out how to make it work with the Billy stuff, and then we spent a lot of time at the store trying to figure out how to make it work with what was in stock. We also wanted cabinets and we're doing a desk. So we've come up with a plan that we think will work. We are gonna start with these cabinets because we're gonna have to adjust the bookshelves that we got. So the cabinets are for sure staying the way they are. I'm still laughing at myself in the fact that I thought this could be a weekend project. Yeah, remember the lessons I mentioned earlier? Learned a lot of them. What I thought was the easy way out was not the easiest. There are a lot of things we would do differently. Honestly, I would recommend going to Home Depot, picking up some plywood or some lumber and just building the shelves yourself. I didn't do the math on it but we spent so much time adjusting to fit these shelves when we could have just made our own specifications ourselves and built it from scratch i also found unfinished cabinets from home depot that are the same price and they come assembled so i will link those down below thought i'd share what i learned to hopefully make it a little easier on you So everything that we did in this project had to be done twice. We had two cabinets and two bookshelves. We bought these bookshelves to go on top of the cabinet. What we did was we assembled this first one and we cut it to the size to fit with our ceiling. We're cutting down these two by threes to go underneath of the cabinets that we built to boost them up a little bit to get that door off the floor. With our brand new saw, we're about to cut these down. We gotta do that for each of the cabinets. We've got our assembled Billy bookcase. We assembled this one to see what it would be like, but now we know that we can cut these before we put the bookcase together. We already cut this before, but we added in those little bottom pieces. So we gotta take a couple inches off. And we've got our backings to get over here. the part that will really make it look like a build-in. We've got this trim piece for the side there. Look at that. It looks like part of the wall. That's so good. Ah, that makes it instantly better. This is how we're hanging the trim piece on. Nick just nailed this piece into the wall. So that way the trim will come up to here. We can nail it in there. We know it's lined up. It'll also meet up with the front of the bookcase.
This is Nick claiming that his socks are just really slippery. Both trim pieces on now. We're adding the safety brackets and I decided to like make sure everything is very mounted onto the wall. But we are gonna have a piece here at the top that hides this whole top section and makes it feel more officially built in. Day two of the project, what? Day two many. Day two, too many. It feels like it's been a while now. This project has had its complications and frustrations. So today started off really well. I was very excited to find this on Facebook Marketplace. This is the bridging shelf that we're planning on using up above. We found it for $50, which is less than half of the price of it at Ikea, and our Ikea was out of stock, so we're like, this is perfect. We got it home, it turns out this is the bigger version, and they posted the wrong measurement. So now we're trying to adjust what we've already put in to see if we can fit this in. Also just really like this one and I like and I want to use it. We now need to take off the trim that we put in, scoot this down in order to fit this in the middle. So I feel like we're starting again from like halfway through the day yesterday. This little bridging shelf that we're about to put up is what really threw everything off for us. It was not the right measurement, they said. We ended up having to take things off that we had already secured. When you have two kids and limited babysitter time, everything feels more stressful, like you've gotta work as fast as you can and be as productive as you can. <laughs> Finally, the fun and exciting day I was waiting for, my big Home Depot trip to pick out the paint and the plywood for our desk. The awesome thing about Home Depot is that they will cut down plywood for you. I don't know of another place that will do that and they cut it perfectly to my dimensions and I got some scrap plywood to use on other projects. Again, thank you to Home Depot and PPG for sponsoring this project. The paint I use for this whole room is from the PPG Timeless Collection and you can see there are so many beautiful color options here. I had a lot of ideas in my mind. I had searched online before I went in here. I always like to see the colors in other people's homes as well. I'm leaning towards these black, like dark, dark navies, but not black yet. This is like a black black. This is my dark, dark navy. So just like a barely kind of blue, not fully black. I'm nervous to go fully black. And this is my other blue. That's a little bit more blue. On camera, it looks a lot more blue, but that's why I think I'm gonna go with this one, just because. This is the most similar to what I've seen and what I'm trying to go for in my inspiration pictures. I've been wanting to try this new caulk. It's better than what I usually go for and I've heard that it has really great stretchability, so we'll see. Okay, I'm not just saying this, I swear, but I don't know what was up this morning. That was like the best experience I've ever had at a hardware store. Everybody was so, so nice. And then as I was leaving, this little old man, he was working, he was one of the workers, came up to me, he was like, Thank you for shopping at Home Depot. You're doing great. I was like, thank you. I love that. For the first time in my life, I went with the nicer plywood. This is the pre-sanded three quarter inch thick plywood that we'll be using as the top of our desk. Front will be covered to make it appear thicker than it is. Here's where we're at with this process. I just got the desk piece in and it fits perfectly. We obviously still have pieces to trim in here, here, and down over here but I'm gonna start the priming process for these guys. So I did my research on how to do these built-ins with the bookcases that we had, and I will link the article that I found down below on how to paint them. The coverage of the timeless paint, these cabinets didn't really need it, I just went ahead and did them. But the bookcases are a laminate, so they definitely needed some sanding and priming. It's another reason that I really wish I would have just built our own bookcases. You live and you learn, and next time that is what I would do. Okay, 
Okay, it is nighttime now and not the best lighting in this room, but I've got all this primed. It's hard to tell because it is already a white color. I am so excited to try out this paint now. Like I said, I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. So more about the PPG Timeless Paint. It delivers a complete one coat hide, coverage, and durability. Everywhere in our house, we have always done two coats no matter what, so you'll see us do that. But it has an outstanding washability, scrubability, and stain resistant. I noticed that as I was working on things around the already painted cabinets, I would drop something on it, and I was able to just wipe things right off. So PPG Timeless Paint's innovative new formula makes it even more washable to help you keep your walls looking just like the day that you painted them. It is their brand new advanced formula that's easier to clean. It offers the toughest, most wear resistant finish and is priced under $40. They have over a thousand one coat color options available and PPG paint has been trusted by professional painters for over 135 years and it's now easier than ever to use. So check it out exclusively at the Home Depot, online, or in store. We went with an eggshell finish and it is still so smooth and easy to dust off and clean. So that's one of the things that I loved about this paint. I've been so in the mindset of painting walls and all of our walls are an eggshell finish that I forgot I normally go for a semi-gloss on cabinets. So I would probably suggest that, but I will say our eggshell is still fantastic. Let me know in the comments what you think of this color. If you would have gone lighter or darker, I'm really curious. Not gonna lie, felt like I was painting for an entire week straight. One of the things that we realized was that we have a spray gun and it does a great finish. I was the one who wanted to kind of see it in the space before we painted it, but we were able to take a couple of the items and Nick sprayed this bookshelf down in our basement, which did save a lot of time. And one coat really covered this shelf well. Day seven of this project. It has been a week since we started this. We haven't worked on it every single day. We're finishing the trim up and putting the desk in today and our goal is to finish it today. We also need to paint the rest of this room. We're hoping to brighten it up a little bit so that this dark, dark wall doesn't just take over this room feeling so dark. We just got back from Home Depot again. We've got our color for the walls right here. Like I said, I'm about to finish rolling the inside. Look at this. Here's pretty much what it's looking like right now. I also took a trip to World Market and Goodwill to fill in the styling as soon as we're done with the rest of the stuff. I'm excited. Hopefully finish this and get our life back to normal because this is what project mode looks like in our house. Next up was the desk. Our plywood was pre-sanded, but I went over it with a 220 grit to make it just as smooth as possible before wiping it down and staining it. I will link the stains down below that I used. I found them at Home Depot and they are the same ones that I use on our fireplace. So the goal was to kind of match the mantle with this. And this is the hardware that I found. I loved the sleek modern look. This is five inches long. I was originally thinking the cabinets would be white so this matte black would look good against it. But when I decided to go with a darker cabinet, don't mind my stained fingers, I realized I needed to change these to a lighter metal so I went with a satin bronze. <laughs> So we worked as a team to get this all done. We kind of bounced back and forth between tasks. We're clearing out the room to get ready for painting later. When the desk was dry, it was time to put it in. We nailed this one by two to the front of it to make the desk look thicker than it actually is. I 
went over the desk with this gloss polyurethane seal. It does dry really quickly. I wanted the finish to feel very smooth, so that's why I went with the gloss. Here's the color that we picked out for our walls. It's called Delicate White. I think it was a color of the year. We found it in one of the books. Nick's gonna start cutting in the top. I do think we'll end up having to roll the majority of it tonight. I'm gonna finish this little edge over here. I'll leave you guys with another painting montage. touches and styling day. So I've got some like wicker baskets, some lighter objects, a few more things in here, and then some finds that I had at Goodwill. I grabbed a couple books, not because of what book they are, but because I liked the cover of them. I've got another blue book over here. I'm hoping to stack some up. I even got an orange one. If you ever find something with this, like this cover on it, look underneath because you might find a different color. And this one was such a find. It's called American Interior Design. How perfect is that? Some old school interior design. My main goal for the shelves was to not do like all black things, things that were dark because you would lose them in the shelves and not be able to see them. For the most part, I had to do a lot of playing around, moving things to different places to find out what I liked. And what I love about the shelves is that I'll be able to change them out seasonally. So I've got a couple little fall things up here now, but when Christmas comes around, I love that I can change that up. Okay guys, I'm standing in the finished dining room. I'm so excited to show you. There are still some things that need to be touched up, but my husband just took our girls on a walk. So I'm gonna take advantage of this quiet and peace and be able to show you everything. Okay, are you ready for this reveal? I love this delicate white that we painted on the walls that are not the big accent wall. Really love its color next to the navy blue. The room needed to be brighter because this dark wall is pulling in so much attention, it's just so dark. So we get something bright opposite of that. That's what we've got over here is our delicate white. For our dining table, the chairs are my one of my next projects. I need to either swap out chairs or paint these like I said that I always would. I just never got to them. I got a deal on them on Facebook Marketplace, but they look pretty rough. One of the ideas I'm thinking about is potentially making a bench or finding a bench to go on the other side. That way it doesn't conflict with whatever office chair we have here. I don't know if we're referring to this as an office area or what. My husband's the one who does a lot of work during the day and his computer and stuff will be set up here until we get to finish the basement and then we'll move him downstairs and this will just be for my editing. The other thing that I really like is that when we do have like guests over or something, this can kind of be an entertaining space. We could have food and stuff out here. Never really 
had anything, any other place to set things on in this room besides the table itself. For the shelves, I was looking around on Pinterest to kind of see what they should be like because I feel like I never know how to decorate shelves and how they're actually supposed to like work with your eye and the triangles and all the things. For the top two, I went with some old books from Goodwill, honestly the cheapest best decor that you could do. For the books, I just put them face out so you only see these. It doesn't matter what books they are. And these are some Goodwill books in a Goodwill little ceramic pot. Down here is a Goodwill basket find. I was really excited because it's kind of a unique basket. These beautiful lights I'm planning on doing our little light trick with. If you haven't seen that, I will try and link down below what that is to explain it to you guys. And over on this side, like I said, try not to be too matchy-matchy, but keep it kind of like a cohesive feel. I think I saw that Lone Fox had this and I knew that I wanted to incorporate that. I love the natural element that these logs brought in. Inside of the cabinets right now, we don't really have much. They haven't gone through and organized them. I think this one might be like overflow from our pantry since our pantry is not too large. This was an intense project. I love the outcome though and it's very practical for us. If you could hit that like button, it helps my channel out so much. Leave me a comment down below telling me what you like or what you would do differently. I'm curious if you would go with white or try this darker color like I did. If you're new, I'd love to have you hit subscribe. I have a lot of makeovers coming your way. Thank you so much for watching and as always, happy cleaning. Bye.